hello everyone we are back with a new youtube video today i thought of uh, discussing with you something uh, that will helpful for your a level syllabus uh, i thought of discuss the characteristics of neoclassical era literature so in your syllabus you all know we have two poems related to neoclassical era or we call it as augustan era literature so uh, uh, here we just uh, discuss few characteristics we find in neoclassical era literature the two poems you have in your syllabus uh, you have one poem by john dryden and you have another by alexander pope so uh, neoclassical neoclassical era we call it as uh, what uh, neo for new classic the style and work of the ancient uh, authors of greece and rome so neoclassical so it's a uh, once again it's a kind of like a rebirth or restoration of classicism right uh, especially neoclassical era is characterized by uh, the age of john Dry dryden and alexander pope and both of these uh, poets both of the poets uh, wrote basically satires so you all know what a satire is satire is a uh, a poem with uh, exaggerative language and uh, they used to through the satires they used to mark the loopholes in the society or the weaknesses in the society and ridicule that ridicule people and comment on the weaknesses of the people to ridicule them so then uh, they use uh, an impressive style scholarly allusions mythology and um, their their use of like a uh, lot of uh, imagination hmm? so uh, most uh, one of the most important uh, characteristic you find in uh, neo classical era poetry it's uh, most of the neo classical poems are uh, th those poems based on rationalism r reasoning out rationalism reason as the main spring of learning knowledge and inspiration of poetry hmm? so uh, especially uh, when it comes to like you can see the difference a uh, huge difference between uh, romantic poems and neo classical era poems because in most of uh, romantic poems you find lot of imagination and uh, the poems like um, imagination plus uh, like uh, the poets wanted to be out of the reality romanticism is to uh, if we give a definition for romanticism it is an it is a way of escaping from reality but neoclassical it's not out of the reality it is to be with the reality and to see the reality as it is so uh, reason as i told you reason as the main spring of learning so a reaction against the renaissance the romantic period an outcome of intellect there's no fancy there's no imagination uh, no sentiments like that in poets hmm? and mostly if uh, when you go through your two poems uh, especially uh, john dryden's poem uh, you don't have uh, 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 it's not a satire actually it's about the satires um uh, the poem that he wrote uh, to mr oldham the poem uh, what he wrote for his friend who was a satirist who died at young age so there he wanted to comment on he wanted to discuss about the characteristics of the satires what type of poems they used to write at that time so um, mostly dryden wrote political satires and uh, uh alexander pope brought uh, social satire so they both uh, wanted to mark the weaknesses in the society so the aristocratic families and uh, politics they used to discuss different weaknesses different loopholes in the society so uh, when you see then um, dryden's poem as an example you find uh, the use of allusions uh, use of religious biblical allusions um that help to convey the message they use the allusions basically to convey their message effectively and also if you find neoclassical poems against romantic nature 
uh, it is like humanity through the magical power of poetry and uh, like uh, what uh, against the romanticism as i told you it is to be in the reality to be with the by using the power of poetry to be in the reality so it is basically it is mostly the realism romantic poems i mean the neoclassical poems you find the realism they were uh, the neoclassical poets were not living in their own world of imagination now romantic poets you know like uh, the poets like wordsworth john dun uh, sorry uh, john keats so those poets when they were like uh, they wanted to escape from the realistic situation in uh, keats's poem he was suffering from the sickness and he knew he was about to die so he wanted to escape from that he wanted to reach the death he wa- uh, the nature was a, was like a vehicle nature was a source that could transport them or transfer them from reality to imaginary world fancy but he came like uh, Uh, they stay there or they came back there but the rea- uh, imagination fancy it's there they mention about that they use nature as a main source but here it's mostly realistic they were not living in their world of imagination uh, hard realistic and presented a true picture of the society it can be the weaknesses or whatever they wanted to ridicule the society but whatever it is they presented a true picture of the society so keen observe on what they see hmm? they they are like you cannot say like they are escaping they are not escaping they do not escape they are so we can't uh, uh, categorize them or identify them as uh, we cannot identify them as escapists so they they were living there so unlike romantics who escape from the help of plight of imagination you find these neoclassical poets they lived in the reality and they were the men of action and practically they lived in the minds of the people so and also you find as some characteristics uh, you find the heroic couplet especially in dryden's poems or pope's poems you find the heroic couplets two lines two lines like the the couplets they they rhyme together and uh, very flexible lines and uh, even the humor comes like uh, irony or the humor use of humor it goes like very balanced lines like it goes up and down so uh, very passionate like uh, there's a uh, in comparison to romantic poems you don't find uh, so uh, passionate uh, lyricism lyrics you don't find passionate lyrics you don't find uh, lyrical quality is not there in your classical poems like uh, uh, lacking lyrical features you can't say no at all it's like you can say there's lacking lyrical features um, like uh, what a very intellectual the poems uh, are very intellectual uh, and also the po- objectivity like uh, they tried uh, they tried objective poetry their poems are objective by avoiding giving uh, went to their feelings like rather than uh, uh, rather than moving towards the feelings of them moving towards the sentiments of them they were like they were not letting them to get attracted towards the feelings to be passionate but to be intellectual but to live in the reality they so you can easily understand this when you compare like uh, uh, take the poems of uh, wordsworth now in your collection you have wordsworth's poetry keats poetry so very romantic poems they have uh, and also you can uh, go through and you can find out some of the features some of the um, uh, characteristics of romantic poetry what are the romantic uh, what are the definitions for romanticism what are the characteristics of uh, romanticism then see what uh, then when you then you compare romantic poems with neoclassical poetry then you can easily understand you can easily see the characteristics of the 
uh, or the different characteristics between the romantic poems and the neoclassical poems. So I hope you got an idea. This is just a rough idea what I explained you. It's not uh, a complete something. I just gave you a point uh, that's uh, something like uh, that can make you to think about this. Uh, so uh, you can do some more self-study. You can go through these poems and you can um, you can find more details from internet and uh, you can develop you can expand your knowledge i hope what i said would uh, was helpful to you so let's meet with another video soon until then all the best study well bye